Hi everyone, thanks for watching another episode of Taproot TV. Today we have an interesting topic. I've got Marcus Miller here to talk about something that's going to affect every single one of us. Absolutely. Now, whether you're in the medical uh, profession or not, the reason why this is, affects you is... Well, we want to go over the case with uh, Redonda Vaught. Um, she was a nurse that was recently charged with uh, crimes because she made some mistakes. Uh, even though there was a lot of systemic issues at the medical center that she was working with, um, she really got convicted because she wasn't able to overcome these systemic issues, and that affects all of us, right? Mm -hmm. Because if healthcare professionals will incriminate themselves by admitting mistakes, then who's going to admit mistakes? Right, and right? That's, that's what she did. She did. She, yeah. As soon as she made the mistake, as soon as she realized she made the mistakes, she went and self-reported and uh, did everything she was supposed to do. Uh, the system failed her, you know, the, the, the system safeguards that were supposed to catch people's mistakes before they harmed a patient, those also failed. Yeah. But uh, I loved her um, attorney's opening statements. He said that, you know, when the blame music stopped, that the only person who didn't find a chair was Redonda Vaught. Yeah. Um, the medical center, you know, they covered, so they found a chair. Uh, the physician that was involved found a chair. The only person that didn't find a chair was uh, Redonda Vault, and she is uh, the one that's paying the price. Uh, and if medical professionals, if the other nurses are afraid to admit mistakes, then you, me, our loved ones that are in the hospital, if somebody makes a mistake, that puts them at higher risk because that mistake will stay hidden until there's a harm to the patient. Okay. So not only if you're a nurse or if you have a healthcare background, this is extremely important. This sets a precedent that is dangerous to us all. Yeah. And so the, what we're going to do is take a look at our software. Our Taproot software is going to walk through the facts, not opinions, of the case so we can see really what happened. Well, and yeah, and I think you read to me just a little bit ago about um, an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, oh, I'll pull it yeah, up. Yeah, read the, read the uh, uh, assistant DA's We have statement. two different assistant DA's. One of them says, and we'll put a link below, this is a USA Today article. Uh, it says that Redonda Vaught probably did not intend to kill Miss Murphy, but she made a knowing choice. And that was a direct quote from assistant DA Brittany Flatt. And we also have another assistant DA, Chad Jackson. He says, this wasn't an accident or a mistake that it's been claimed. There were multiple chances for Redonda Vaught to just pay attention. Right? So if you've ever been in a healthcare center, pay, it to pay more attention, that's not a very effective uh, mm. uh, corrective action. So one of the things that we did with this case, because it was so blaring that the system failed, failed this nurse, is we created a course around it, a taproot course. So what we want to do, instead of just sharing opinions on, you know, it, if, no matter what side of this you're on, instead of just sharing opinions, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the evidence. So this evidence I'm about to show on the screen, this evidence is um, uh, from the CMS report when they went in and did their survey, and it's also from the board review and the trial that just happened. So let's take a look. This is the true story. This is the evidence that was collected. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up what we call as a snap chart. So this is a way that we organize the evidence that's collected, put it into a sequence of events. We ask questions about those events to really get a good understanding of this incident. So that's what we did here. And first of all, we know this patient was admitted to the hospital. Uh, if you're familiar with the story, you know that she went into radiology for a PET scan. Uh, she was claustrophobic, so she did ask for something for anxiety. And the physician ordered something. He ordered a Versed. Now, the nurse, the, the main nurse, she was really busy. So uh, Redonda was a help-all nurse. So they gave her a call, and she said she could help. So she was the one that's now going to give the patient the medication. So she goes to the automatic dispensing cabinet to get Versed. Now, this is where things get a little wonky. So she goes to the cabinet, and she pulls out the wrong medication. Now, how did that happen? So reading through CMS's report and knowing what we know from the trial, well, she couldn't gain access to Versed at first, so she hits the override right here. 
Now, we know it's typical that the automatic dispensing cabinets have overrides, so clinicians can get medication when they need it in emergent situations. Well, we also found out in this, um, in this trial that there were delays between the automatic dispensing cabinet and the medical records. So the temporary corrective action at the medical center was just use the overrides because then you can get the medicine you need. Even if the medical record hasn't caught up with the dispensing cabinet and the dispensing cabinet wouldn't give you the right medication because the order wasn't in there yet, well, you could still get the medication you needed through the override. And the nurse said it was common practice to use the override function if they can't find medication, which was confirmed by other staff members. So we also found it in the trial, and it's not here, but there were 20 other medications given to this patient via other nurses, various nurses, uh, that used override to get that medication out of the cabinet. Yeah. I mean, I find that fascinating that the, uh, Redonda was singled out for using the override when everybody was using the, 20 different medications were pulled out of that cabinet using the override, yeah. not just this. So then the nurse said she couldn't find Versed under the patient profile, so that's why she used the override. And since she was trying to get Versed, she hit VE, and the first medication that came up was Vecaronium, so she pulled out the wrong medication. I want to go back for a second. So you're talking about um, she couldn't find it under the profile. What does that mean for people who maybe aren't familiar what you're referencing? Right, so if she pulls up the patient, it should have the medications that have been prescribed mm -hmm. and she should be able to pull those out. So uh, the cabinet was actually set not on, um, the, it was set on the uh, generic names, mm -hmm. not the brand names. So that's why she couldn't find Versed with VE. Yep. So when and, it, she, and it wasn't under her profile and there was also an issue with the it sinking, the mm -hmm. data, the records weren't coming over quickly. That's right. Right. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's why she put in VE, that's why Vecaronium popped up, and that's mm -hmm. how she got it into her hand. And she was also had an orientee with her day, that day. She was talking about a swallow study. So as she's interacting with her orientee, she puts in the VE, she pulls out the Medicaid. She thinks she has Versed in her hand, not mm -hmm. Vecaronium. So then she puts the vector. Oh, let me explain this too. These these little triangles here, mm -hmm. these are the mistakes that were made, right? So this is a, it's, maybe it's not a mistake because she was supposed to use the override, but this is an opportunity for us to really look into this and find out. Let's take this mistake through root cause analysis so we can find the root cause. Let's not just blame her for hitting the override, right? Like mm -hmm. she was in the trial, she was blamed for it. Let's truly understand why she was asked to do that or why she decided to do that. Now in the trial, they say it's a, an egregious error. Yeah. But if you're looking at all the facts, everybody's doing it. Right. And they were told to do that because of the delays in the communication between the automatic dispensing cabinet mm -hmm. and the electronic medical record. Mm -hmm. So she got blamed for it, but right. is it her fault? So then, there's, so you'll see a couple of these triangles as you go through this snap chart. Now here's another opportunity to stop this. Mm -hmm. So the nurse puts the Vecaronium into a baggie for transport. She didn't notice she was packing the wrong medication. Um, there's no official policy to recheck. So these little brick walls here, this red brick wall, mm -hmm. that's a broken safeguard. So they have overrides for a reason, but then they just disregarded that safeguard because they needed to because of the delay in communication. Right. Broken safeguard. Uh, there's also no policy to recheck when they're packing up the medication. Mm -hmm. This blue, maybe there needs to be a safeguard there. Maybe there needs to be a policy where if you're packing medication up, there's something that triggers you to look to make a sure you have the check, right. check, another, somebody to verify alongside you. Right. Right. Um, so then as we move through the snap chart, she takes the baggie with the medicine to radiology where the patient was. She arrives to radiology with the orientee. The nurse does not perform five rights per the policy, and she doesn't scan the bracelet. Now, most medical centers, you scan the bracelet, you scan the medication, and the system tells you that everything's okay. Well, radiology didn't have this technology. So another safeguard that's supposed to be put in place failed this nurse. Um, so she couldn't scan it. So that didn't happen. Another mistake that needs to go through root cause analysis. A uh, nurse was expected at the next procedure, so she was in a hurry, and she didn't do the full five rights. Uh, she just does the patient's name. 
Uh, and there's no audits at the medical center for five rights. It's just general training that nurses get. So again, if we're not checking to see if this is done as an organization, that kind of goes into somebody's thought process on choosing to follow that policy or not. If they're in a hurry, they think they have the right medication, mm -hmm. they just want to make sure they got the right patient. You know, she didn't do the full five rights. She did part of it, she didn't do the full thing, and that's on her. And right. I'll tell you, she lost her license over this, mm -hmm. right? So that's a pretty severe punishment. Right. And on top of that, now she's facing criminal charges. Anyway, she did make mistakes. We're not, yes. we're not completely, and, she's and not And she's free. admitted to them and says she would not uh, go back from telling the truth. Like she stands behind that she did the right thing by mm -hmm. speaking up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I, I, we'll probably talk we, about this in a second. Go, oh yes. my gosh, there's so much to this. Uh, so there's two. she doesn't do the five rights, but there's also not the scanner. So the mm -hmm. scanner's supposed to protect the from any that's mistakes. That's the when you have a bracelet on. If you've never been to the emergency room or in the hospital, um, when you're admitted, there's a bracelet they give you. It's a paper plate, and it's got your name, date of birth, uh, some information to make sure that you're the right person. And then when they come in, they're supposed to also verify that information. Right, because you don't want to depend on people doing the right thing a hundred percent of the time in order for a patient not to get hurt. That's so right. yes, the nurses are supposed to do a five rights. But then the backup is the, the fail safe is do the scan as well. And that way, if anything's messed up by a person, well, the technology is going to catch it. That's well, right. that wasn't available. So another systemic issue. Mm -hmm. So then the nurse reconstitutes Vecaronium, the wrong medication. So she didn't notice she had a paralytic, even though there was a, a warning sign on there. Um, she did, missed it. She didn't understand the warning sign or, you know, she was just... I think what I heard was she was surprised that she had to reconstitute it. So she just looked at the directions to reconstitute it. Um, this warning, the labels on these medications, they've been overlooked or misunderstood in other uh, paralytic medication errors. So it's not, again, it's just not her. There's other people making these mm -hmm. mistakes. So maybe we have a labeling problem as well. Mm -hmm. There's no policy to recheck. Uh, medication check is only required during the five rights. And nurse said she only looked at reconstitution. So then she goes and she administers the wrong medication through the IV. Then the nurse and radiology tech explains that someone will be back shortly to take the patient to the procedure. Now the nurse did not monitor the patient's reaction to the medication. Mm -hmm. Now that was a big deal at the trial too because industry standard, you uh, monitor somebody after giving this type of sedative, right? right? But Redonda called and said, hey, are you sure this patient doesn't need monitoring after I give him the medication? And she was told the doctor's order said monitoring was not required. Yeah. Another systemic failure, failure to this nurse. She tried to do the right thing and was told, no, you don't have to stay. Now, she was already behind. She was supposed to go to that swallow study, so she made the decision, well, if I don't have to monitor the patient, according to the doctor, then... I'm going to go and take care of my work. Uh, the hospital policy didn't contain any guidance regarding the manner and frequency of monitoring patients after meds are given. Uh, Versed was not on the hospital's list of high alert medications, so that's probably why the doctor said it's not required. But it is industry standard. And she did say she, if it was required, she would have stayed. And if she, she would have stayed. If and if she, she would have stayed, stayed, she would have noticed that that patient was having problems because they got the wrong medication. And it's they would have given her medication to... Um, counteract the uh, Vecaronium, mm -hmm. and that patient went in and died. Okay. So again, a mistake. So if any of these mistakes didn't happen, we, this patient would have lived. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to do root cause analysis on each one of these mistakes, because you got to find the root causes of each one so you can fix them. And root causes, they're just the absence of a best practice or an absence right. of knowledge that's currently not in the systems, in this hospital systems. Well, you can find those best practices, you can find that knowledge, and then you introduce them into the systems through corrective actions. So as you go through here and you find these mistakes, take each one through root cause analysis, you find the, the system weaknesses, the root causes, and you fix those weaknesses. Every investigation should lead, lead to continuous improvement. Um, and that's not going to happen here because they only blame the nurse. And there's there's still more. We haven't even gotten to and I get And I, yeah. get, I get upset about this because yeah. I'll have loved ones in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'll be in the hospital, hopefully not, but likely yes. Yeah. And when I'm in there, if somebody makes a mistake, 
I want them to tell somebody they made the mistake because if that mistake stays hidden, yeah. that could be my life. Right. That could be your, our loved one's lives. So this is why this is so important and the, what a horrible precedent this case mm. sets. So then uh, once the nurse and radi radiology tech leaves, this is the tragic part, that paralytic takes effect and it, it takes away her ability to call out or breathe. She's by herself. She was left alone for about 30 minutes. They find her unresponsive. Um, somebody does find her and they do start resuscitation. They able to get her back, but she never regains consciousness. And eventually uh, they discontinue the, the ventilation and, and the patient expires. Now, the only reason this came about too is because the medical center here when they reported the death, they said it was due to natural causes, right? And a whistleblower a uh, little bit later on says, hey, something funky's going on here. And that opens up this larger investigation. Mm -hmm. So this would never have come out if that part didn't happen. So once, once they came to investigate about the uh, reporting of this patient's death, then all the other stuff came out. And that's when things started really focusing on the nurse. Mm -hmm. So I hope you can see, I hope this made it pretty clear going through the snap chart, the sequence of events, the conditions around those events. We put together a snap chart so we can analyze it, look for those mistakes that were made. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for those mistakes to blame people. We're just looking for the mistakes because if we can fix those mistakes, if we can ensure that those mistakes don't happen again, then we're not going to have this incident. We don't have to worry about a repeat incident. So we go ahead and put together a snap chart. We find those mistakes. We ask questions, human performance questions, equipment reliability questions. We capture that evidence on our snap chart and we use this evidence to take it through root cause analysis. Mm -hmm. And that gives us very objective, consistent, defensible findings when we do root cause analysis. For example, taking these mistakes through root cause analysis, we found several root causes for this incident. Now these are not blame oriented. These are not the nurse didn't know what she was doing or the nurse needs to pay more attention. These are actual root causes that you can fix, that you just introduce a best practice or knowledge into your system. Strengthen your system so you enforce the rules better. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you're doing audits on nurses doing five rights so you can detect as a management team, so you can detect when they don't do them so you can correct them immediately. Mm -hmm. So when they make a decision either to follow the rules or not follow the rules. Well, if you know you're going to get, it's going to be addressed if you don't, you're probably going to decide to do the right thing. That's part of your decision-making process. So there's a lot of things the medical center can do to improve their system so the next nurse that comes along and is in this situation doesn't make these same mistakes. Yeah. So yes, Redonda made some mistakes, right? But there's all kinds of system safeguards that are supposed to protect patients from mistakes people make, and they didn't work. So for her to, to solely be held responsible for this is tragic is. for the industry it and is. for all of us because it's gonna affect us. Nurses, who's gonna to wanna to be a nurse if they know that you know, they're gonna be criminally charged if they make a mistake? Mm -hmm. Nursing is a noble profession, right? People yeah. get into nursing because they wanna help people. And if society, and I heard this from one of the nurses at the trial, uh, after they did an interview, she said, it's a noble profession. We do it because we want to help people. But if this is how society is going to treat us when we make an honest mistake, why do we do it? Yeah. So now we're going to have less nurses when we already have a nursing shortage, yep. which is going to put more pressure on the remaining nurses. Mm -hmm. That's going to cause them to make more mistakes, and that's going to put us at risk. Yep. And then when we look at just administration as a whole, instead of having everybody make it the norm to do the override, why are we having to do an override in the first place? Let's fix that because the override's supposed to protect us. Well, and you see here, one of the root causes, corrective actions need improvement, right? Mm -hmm. Their corrective action was just to use the, rotor, uh, the override. But that's just disregarding a safeguard. That's throwing a safeguard out that's supposed to protect patients mm -hmm. because of a technology issue, yeah. right? That's a terrible safeguard. And, and I mean, that's a terrible corrective it's action. Time and time again, when uh, even in, in a roller coaster, there's a, a safeguard in place that you have to have that seatbelt connected. Right. Um, and the ride's not supposed to take off. But if somebody hits the button for the override, the ride takes off. We have to stop. That's why those are there. 
-hmm. the safeguards are to say, wait a minute, hold on. Um, and when we do things to pass those by, it, we're asking for trouble. So yeah, it is a systemic problem throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a question. Uh, you've been following the case closely. Uh, do you know at what point she admitted that she made a mistake? As soon as she found out. You know, as soon, I think um, what I remember is there was like an announcement, like a code blue, and she thought maybe, you know, it could be her patient. Uh, she's thought about what happened, and then she started to get an idea of um, that she may have had the wrong medication, and she went back to where the patient is and where all the doctors were, and she talked about them, about the mistake that she made. Uh, so, yeah, and here's another thing that really kind of touched me. As she was coming out of the trial where she just found out that she could get, I think, up to eight years in jail. Um, in prison. She just said, look... I'm just happy that this legal process is is about done. It's been three and a half years I've been going through this. She goes, I will carry the weight of this patient's death with me the rest of my life. Like, yeah. that's not going to go away. But just this whole legal process for three and a half years of getting blamed for this and making, you know, just that, I just can't imagine the weight. You mm -hmm. know, you you feel responsible for this patient's death. You've, and you have all this going on around. And it's not over yet. I mean, yeah. she's going to be sentenced in May, so she still doesn't know what this punishment is going to is going to be. So, I don't know. I mean, to me, this precedent is is going to affect us all. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if she. I I don't know what kind of um, um, what do you call it? Um, um, where you can go back and see if the. What am I trying to say? Here? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, appeal. Okay. I don't okay. know what kind of gotcha. appeal she has, so see if this can get turned overturned or not. Uh, but for right now, I'm sure a lot of people are upset with this with this yeah. outcome. Yeah, definitely. I am. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it affects a lot of people, and it's something that not not just in the medical profession. There are other professions out there. If people are like you said, if they're afraid to tell the truth, which she wasn't. Um, and, and when we got to the end there, like, wh then why does this death certificate say natural causes if she said it right there at Code mm -hmm. Blue? Yeah, um, there are a lot of other issues. Yeah, um, we've, we've got to slow down, but also realize that it's not the people to blame. It, a lot of times it is the process, and there's fatal flaws that need to be corrected. Otherwise, this is going to repeat itself. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so thanks for sitting in, sitting in here with me today. Uh, I know it's kind of an emotional topic for the both of us, uh, especially because it is close to home here in Tennessee where we are. Um, but uh, it's it's something we've all got to think about. And and with our snap chart and, and at the end here, you were showing us a screen where it kind of gives you the summary. That can even be generated into a report. So if you're an investigator um, looking at an incident, just having the tools right there, looking specifically at the facts, no opinion, because everything that we read from the, the assistant DAs, those are opinions. Mm -hmm. Yep. 100%. Oh, and if you are in healthcare and you are interested in a uh, system, a uh, root cause analysis or instant investigation system like Taproot, just I'm sure we're going to put some kind of um, link at the bottom of this mm -hmm. so you can get in touch with us because I'd love to demo how this instant investigation process and the RCA tools can help healthcare centers um, ensure that when they have an event like this or even smaller events, that they can use it, investigate it well, uh, find the causal factors, the mistakes that were made, take it through root cause analysis, find the root causes of each of those mistakes so we can put corrective actions in place to shore up those system weaknesses. So every investigation that you do will lead to continuous improvement and over time you'll see a reduction in the, se the severity of the, the events. We'll include that below in the description. And then we want to hear your feedback, your comments. What do you think? What are your opinions, your thoughts of this case? Or just anybody in the medical field, your concerns? Talk to us. Let us know in the, in the chat below, in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And we will see you again next time for another episode. Hopefully nothing like this. <laughs> oh, no, no. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, bye.